Hello and welcome to Reaction Shots for January 2021. We 2021. made it kinda not out of the woods. No. Nope. Maybe in the darkest damn part of the woods. The night is darkest just before, before the dawn. Before the dawn, Huber, that's right. <sighs> That's right. Holding out hope. Holding out hope. Uh, a little context. Normally, I, I don't. I don't know what I normally do. I probably do normally let real life shit come in. I tell. I tell you guys everything. But um, we are filming this on Wednesday, January sixth, two thousand twenty-one. The U.S. Senate is trying to do like the count the electoral votes, and shit mm -hmm. was popping off. Mm -hmm. There was a terrorist event, domestic terrorism, basically happening they overtook the capital of the united states which has not happened since like the british the war of 1812 <laughs> it's i heard fucking it's insane time. dude 200 uh, years i laugh because i otherwise would scream mm -hmm. um but yeah so shit's a little weird today we might be in a weird headspace mm -hmm. ongoing event um Breaking. they're out there counting doing whatever they're talking on cnn right i don't know what the hell's going on right now um but yeah we're here to talk about movies and escape from all that for just a moment and hopefully help you guys you all listening beautiful humans listening to feel mm -hmm. a little better maybe i don't know i'm feeling okay i mean after Could the be year better. we've had yeah it's just another thing another log on the fire um seriously it's just never ending Never ending. It's like but, making me numb. Yeah. Very numb to these things. Hubie. Oh, pardon pardon that. Sorry. I hit the mic stand with my soil. Careful. Uh, <laughs> what have you seen lately? Lately? Well, we're mostly talking about kind of like a gr greatest hits tonight, right? Best of? Kind of. Uh, yeah. Kind of, yeah. The, the theme for this episode is just 2020 wrap up. We're yeah. looking back at the year. Um, big old asterisk, pretty, a few people mentioned this in the comments. I'm a, I was going to mention it myself. Weird year. Yeah. Uh, I think like, so obviously weird. like, and thankfully we have a global audience, uh, international, beautiful, wonderful audience. And so release dates real squirrely, mm -hmm. especially this year. So we're not, we're not going to be too specific about 2019 2020 20 whatever oh, okay. release dates we're not going by american release dates a lot of people got really great stuff cool. in the uk this year that we got last year hey man if it's 2020 to you yeah. it's 2020 to me i don't give a I shit i like it i like it um so there's that and also there's so many movies i would have seen so that many. i haven't seen so uh, i i think i've never had a year with more blind spots than this mm -hmm. Primarily because in LA, a lot of these movies that don't come out on streaming, we are able to go and see in theaters, mm -hmm. like these smaller ones like Nomadland or Minari or whatever, like, good chance I would have been able to go and see those. I'm unaware of a way to see those at this mm -hmm. time. Uh, they're technically from this year. Yeah. Um, and also just a whole bunch of other ones. I actually, I, I wrote down every movie I saw this year and all the movies I wanted to see but missed. And mm -hmm. the list for both... Not too long. Okay. Not very long. So I'm going to go through them all after we get through the what have we seen lately. Nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, anything we've seen lately would also fit into the theme. But is there cool. anything you just wanted to shout out right off the top? Right off the top. Or we can just talk about it as we go through. Because I think we're going to. After eight years, basically. Seven, eight years, Vikings came to an end. Mm. Love to see it. Vikings. Um bold moves there vikings with your final <laughs> season whoa like, what does that mean i mean don't spoil it i guess i mean i don't really want to spoil it but like let's just say there's a considerable portion spent on like new and or side characters and like, sounds like you're not thrilled about this yeah because i mean when you go into a final season you know you want to spend time with the people who got you there. You want, like, I don't need any crazy new twists and turns and crazy new storylines. Just, like, give me the comfort of, like, spending time and saying goodbye to the characters that have followed for so many years. Um, that's not to say I, I 
think what they did was wrong. It just, I didn't like it as much as I wanted to. I found it really hard to connect and invest in a lot of these storylines. Yeah. Um, cause uh, the last couple seasons they've done like double wide seasons. So it'll be like 20 episodes. So Whoa. the first 10 aired last year. So it was like, okay, last 10 episodes. So it's been like a year of buildup for the last 10. And it's very unexpected what they do. So I'm going to huh. leave it at that. Aren't they doing like a spinoff or a prequel or a sequel? There's going to be a sequel that's 100 years later coming straight oh. to Netflix. So it'll be a Netflix show. Okay. Uh, also, this these final 10 episodes for the first time, they came to Prime first. Huh. It was usually weekly on History Channel for the entire duration of the show. These last 10 episodes, they all came out on Prime. So I binged them in like two nights. Oh, and they all came out simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all of them. So. Wowzers. So yeah, um, Vikings comes to an end. Um, if you've been following along, you know that it's had some missteps along the way. You know, the first half, I would say, is a lot better than the last half. Uh, they do. They don't. They don't pull any punches. You know, they don't. <laughs> it's hard to explain without spoiling things. But like, a lot has obviously changed over the years with that show. Mm -hmm. Um. It's still one of my favorites, even though I didn't like the ending as much as I wanted to. Still one of my favorites ever, but <laughs> definitely got worse as time went on. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. You're not, you're not selling me I on know. this. That's I know. That's why I prefer a show that gets to, like, end, like, end itself mm -hmm. early, like, on, totally. where they know ahead of time, like, you know, I don't know, Patriot, for example. <laughs> <laughs> nice quick two seasons you're in and out yeah, two satisfied. three seasons no problem yeah um i'm sure I've, there's a hundred other things but that was that's the most important one is vikings for sure the one the one that i recently uh finished watching i had seen maybe the first two episodes a long time ago but i finished it over the weekend was euphoria oh nice um which i really thought was very good um and they did a special episode like a quarantine episode that i loved and it was just two Ooh. people in a diner talking oh, the whole fun. the whole episode basically and it that's was beautiful fun. it that's was really so fun. well written and the music in that show is bananas there's nice. a sequence in a carnival that's just like so crazy the music is so good uh, and awesome. everything else would come up in well wonder woman 84 was not great that's the. Can we talk about that for a sec? Yeah. That is the weirdest damn movie I think I've ever seen in my life. Ian. It is a very strange movie. What the hell is that movie? I was so uncomfortable. There were also no stakes whatsoever. No the, stakes. Beth fell asleep for the first fifty minutes, and she's like, "Yo, I'm sorry. I think I fell asleep." And I and I turned her fifty minutes into this movie, and I'm like, honestly, nothing has happened. Yeah, you've missed nothing. Nothing. Same thing happened with me and my girlfriend with um, uh, Batman v Superman. We were watching the special extended <laughs> edition, first time yeah. ever. We'd like bought it on DVD or something, Blu-ray. No, just no, it's wing. rated R, dude. That extended yeah. cut. And she fell asleep for like an hour and a half and woke back up and was like, "What I miss?" And I'm like, honestly, I, not really anything. Not really like anything. Nothing. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It was just dumb. Yeah. Yeah, dude. DC needs to sort it out. Like. Mm -hmm. Wonder Woman 84, here's the thing. Like, at first, there's that weird intro. Which was which, cool. I love that. It was cool, but pointless, and the CG looked bad. Yeah. Uh, and, but then there's the mall segment, and I'm like, okay, I get what you're doing. Because it felt like a cheesy 80s movie. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, they're making a movie that feels like a low-stakes zippy little dumbass 80s movie right mm -hmm. and that seemed that feeling kind of kept going for a little while then as soon as people start making actual wishes yeah um i'm like all right this is a little weird but that like to me the, it was the thing so they weird. do with steve is so weird it took me out of the whole movie man it, it's so insane like i mean <sighs> I don't even care about spoiling this movie. Yeah, like, so I don't know how it got this far. Like, how? I, why write it this way? Why the, write the it wish this thing, way? The wish thing has no limitations, yes. and yet I you know. put in this super problematic ghost rape, weird ass bullshit <laughs> thing. What are you thinking? It makes zero sense. Just wish them to come back to life. It's done. <laughs> just, just, just bring him back. Like whatever. And that's not even like that's not even like the drawback to that wish. Like it's yeah. a monkey's paw thing, but like that's not even the drawback. 
Yeah. So it's like, literally, why do it that way? Yeah. Why do it? Th- like, it brings up so, so many questions about consent. Yeah. Freaked me and, out. Oh, my God. It's bizarre. It's just Yo, bizarre. Shout out to Pedro Pascal, though. Pedro Pascal's blowing Legendary over-the-top performance. Very well for himself. This year. You must um, give me the wishes! <laughs> it's just, like, <laughs> screaming about wishes for two hours. Which also also makes like no sense. Like none of it makes none of it makes a lick of sense. Which Usually, can be fun. I will say the final shout out to the final action scene. Usually I'm like so che- I'm like not so checked out, but usually like by the time the final action scene comes in bloated blockbusters that like lose your interest. Usually yeah. by the final final action scene, I'm just like, oh come on. This final one I thought was really cool. It was intimate. There were stakes. It was meaningful. I was like, at least they saved the best for last. So, like by the time the uh, which thing are you talking about? Yep, yep. yep, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I liked their relationship at first, and Mm. then it kind of whatever. Um. Anyway, this is not an episode about Wonder Woman. Spoiler mode eighty four. Not even worth it. Uh. The. Okay, so this episode is freaking huge. We have it's a double double double. It is like. I normally I have about ten to twelve pages of notes for this podcast. I have twenty. Okay, move it. Let's uh, go. So we're gonna go pretty next. briskly. Next. If I if I miss anyone's comment, I'm sorry. I'm, Get you I'm next probably time. gonna sum up. I might even just say the movie that you brought up and not Boom. read your whole comment. Uh, I love you. I appreciate you. Mm-hmm. I read them all already, and mm-hmm. they're some great great thoughts. I'll try to fit in as much as I can, but apologies ahead of time because it's just a lot of stuff to say. This is a whole year. Um, But first, um, just kind of as a warm up, I'm going to quickly ramble through the movies I saw, the movies I wanted to see. Nice. Um, And then I got a little surprise for you, Huber, that I think you're going to like that I thought would be interesting to start off because it 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 puts your head in the right space for how weird this year was. Okay. Um, All right. So, movies from this year... I watched a lot of TV this year, Ian. I'm sure you did the same. Way more TV TV than movies. TV was great this year. And way more games. Uh, Films that I saw this year, Bad Boys for Life, Birds of Prey, The Invisible Man, First Cow, Vivarium, The Five Bloods, Tenet, Bill and Ted Face the Music, The New Mutants, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, The Devil All the Time, Possessor, Mank, Run, Happiest Season, Wonder Woman 84, Soul, Death to 2020, The Vast of Night, and Lupin the Third, The First. Nice. Um, which was cute, but kind of disappointed me a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. And then films I want to see, but haven't yet. All the Small Axes, Nomad Land, David Byrne's American Utopia, The Assistant, Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, Minari, She Dies Tomorrow, Kajillionaire, Synchronic, Freaky, Sound of Metal, Jiu-Jitsu, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Uncle Frank, The Prom, Black Bear, Monster Hunter, Another Round, Promising Young Woman, Pieces of a Woman, News of the World, The Father, Ammonite, and Emma. With two M's. And now also Emma with one M, which <laughs> in America Both may have come out in 2019, but I don't know. Whew. It's a lot. So I saw fewer movies than I wanted to see, clearly. Same. Um, but I know you like NPDs, Huber. And Love this, NPDs. I, I've got the list of the domestic box office. <sighs> this is going to hurt. For 2020. Uh, although Invisible they list Man's here, got to be up there. They list your total gross. Well, yeah, that's... That's what I want you to um, guess. What What do you think number one was? It's got to be like Invisible Man or Birds of Prey. Both in the top ten. Both good guesses. Hmm. Tenant? Is no, it Tenant? Okay. Not in the top ten. Okay. Tenant I would describe as an abject failure. <laughs> <laughs> for in, for a, uh, the expectations. There something in January that came out? I don't know. It came out in January. It was, I think, this or Birds of Prey was the last movie I saw in theaters. Invisible Man? Did I already see that? No. I saw Invisible Man at home. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Bad Boys for Life. Bad Boys, Number dude. I saw one, Bad Boys. Dude. I like the song I saw in that. It too. It's like the remix from the song in the original. The rhythm of the night. But oh, it's like yeah. It's the remix one for Bad Boys for Life. It's cool. Um, and these are domestic numbers, according to Box Office Mojo. Uh, that one is total gross, two hundred six million. So 
that puts things in perspective. The, the number Bad one Boys film for life was yeah, the number one. Was the number one with only two hundred million. Like that is... that's bananas. Domestic. I don't know what they're. It doesn't show their. Uh, wow. But uh, number hit. two was nineteen seventeen, which was released oh Christmas God. of the nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. Twenty nineteen. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Ever in a movie theater of all time. It was. Yep. I, I saw it in theaters. It was it was a hoot. Top five uh, theater movies ever. This may surprise you, Huber. Uh, mm. Numbers two and three, or three and four, uh, both kind of video game movies. Do you know what number three is? Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog, yep, with 148 million. Uh, Jumanji The Next Level was four. Oh, I never Star saw Wars. Jumanji 2. Oh, I liked it. Nice. Uh, both of those the strong uh First national treasure vibes uh star wars rise of skywalker uh was is fifth here uh, the gross it, domestic gross is 124 million for this one and the total gross is 515 million so probably would have it would have won in the international hmm. then it's birds of prey then it's doolittle then it's little women then it's the invisible man at nine 10 was Call of the Wild, 11 was Onward, 12 was Knives Out, 13 was Frozen 2, 14 was Tenet. Hmm. Coming yeah, in abject 14th. Abject failure. Abject failure, Tenet. <laughs> uh, yeah, so real weird year where the the uh, Star Wars's and your and your Christopher Nolan's and your Frozen 2's and your, and your Pixar's are getting less money than first. Bad Boys for Fucking Life. First year with no MCU. Truly. Long time, since 2009. Yeah. Wait, there's been no MCU at all this year, right? Correct. 20, 20, Not 20, even 20, TV. No MCU. Nope. Huh. Well, S.H.I.E.L.D. finale. S.H.I.E.L.D. But. S.H.I.E.L.D., yeah. Um, yeah, so that's pretty bonkers, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then at the end, Huber and I prepared our top five of the year, um, but we'll do that at the very end. All right. So, for the year... Uh, year-end wrap-up i kind of just asked a slew of questions the length of our responses probably my fault i asked a lot of prompts but uh i asked uh basically like worst film best actor director blah 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 that kind of stuff um so i started actually normally i start with favorite um but i ended with those so best and favorite are at the end worst is first um so everyone i i was just curious what everyone would think the worst movie of 2020 was um do you have a nomination what what, what did you what the only worst? movie that i watched that i despised that i wanted my time back was you should have left kevin mm. bacon amanda seyfried horror movie so boring so boring bad movie skip skip it yeah yeah i can't think of I mean, maybe I just purged it from my mind, and like even bad things this year seemed great by comparison. Um, New Mutants was pretty bad. <laughs> Wonder Woman eighty four was not great. Yeah, Tenet. I, didn't I was really laughing. Like, I was. Laughing. That's the thing, though. Like there were things to enjoy in all of those. So yeah. like nothing. I didn't hate anything really that I can recall yeah. right now. Um, Megan Lenart says Mulan. Michael Seward says Birds of Prey. Cole Smith says Artemis Fowl or The Turning. Um, I didn't see Mulan, and I don't really care to. No. Uh, or Artemis Fowl or The Turning. No. Nope. Morgan Mahala also agrees Artemis Fowl. Were you going to say something? Nope. Uh huh. Just the way I like it. Uh, Nathan Kirst says Hillbilly Elegy. Uh, I'll read this comment here. Ron Howard. And a bunch of award-starved actors go out in the woods and embarrass themselves. Really uh, they're from the South, not too far from where this movie was filmed. And it's the interpretation of what it means to grow up poor down here is both inaccurate and insulting. I will say that yeah, it frequently it crossed so over bad. into so bad it's good territory. And I did enjoy hate-watching it. The six-pack of hard cider and friends <laughs> using Netflix, par- Netflix party. Yeah, I heard, I heard that movie was insulting. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't bother to watch it, but yeah. I heard it was really insulting. Um Zach Wojnar says the second I politically themed I hadn't heard of this. It's a politically themed action movie starring Ryan Felipe and Casper Van Dien. Wow. <laughs> it was yeah, I'm like they're up to stuff. 
It was a cheap, soulless, and entirely devoid of any sort of cheesy tongue-in-cheek charm. It's a shame because I got to interview Casper Van Dien for the movie, and he was oh. lovely and jolly human to chat with, but just who happened to star in an awful movie. Damn. <clears throat> Would you kindly... Rico. We, yeah, would you kindly uh, says it'd be easy to pick something like Doolittle, but my pick is Death to Twenty Twenty. High expectations from Charlie Booker Brooker, as there is usually no one better to, to make a cynical English Guardian news camp flavored commentary on what's happening in the world. However, despite the amazing cast, it simply wasn't funny. Hmm. His weekly wipe is one hundred times better th- as this boring failure. I don't know what a weekly wipe is, but uh, I saw Death to Twenty Twenty. I thought it was cute. I thought it was. Um, it was nice to, as the British might say, take the piss about 2020. Hmm. Do you take the piss about something or take the on something? Piss. I don't know. I don't know. Take don't the know. piss from? Take the piss out of it. Is that how good do you, or bad? I don't how know. How do you put take the piss? Well, take the piss means like tease, but I think. But like, how do you put that in it? Whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, I thought it was fun, but yeah, like they said, it wasn't. Um, the, the the main thing with that with death to 2020 was like just realizing all the shit that's happened this year mm-hmm. like every time because it, it just goes forward chronologically mm-hmm. sorry there's a car alarm or something going on outside um a real lethargic one uh but it was going chronologically and every time it got to the next thing i was just like oh god that mm-hmm. was this year too jeez like <laughs> woof what a year dodgers won the world series like the only good thing that happened <laughs> yep that happened uh, conrad uh says worst for me was probably the spanish netflix horror movie don't listen original title is voces <laughs> it's not trash it has some decent scares but in the end it's truly mediocre haunted house story logan Tau taos taos uh, we've covered your last name before and conrad's <laughs> i'm so bad Last names. Um, worst one for them was Train to Busan Peninsula. The first train was amazing. Oh, it's so but good. this one didn't one. live up at all. Yeah, I need to see that still. I haven't seen it. Well, I still, I did, I was going to watch the second one this Halloween, but it's getting kicked over to next year. So I'll, I'll, oh. in October, we'll do a little, I'll, I'll mention it, I'm sure. But really wanted to watch that one because it's like more action based. Yeah. The first one's obviously an action movie, but this one is like soldiers and like, yo. Oh, okay. Take the zombies down. <laughs> Take them down. Yeah. Take the shot. <laughs> uh, Eric Sayer says, I haven't seen many really bad movies this year. The worst was probably Sonic the Hedgehog, and it was fine. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, I didn't see Sonic. I missed Sonic. Uh, That's the thing now with streaming, Ian, is like you're talking about the movies you saw and you want to see, and it's like, man, I don't know how many 2018 and 2019 movies I watched this year just like catching yeah, up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything's so That's available the thing. now. and. I was catching up to a bunch of other stuff. There's just yeah. so many forever. It's constant. Colin Goodspeed. You know what your name means, don't you? Goodspeed. Goodspeed. Um, <laughs> while Mank Goodspeed. wasn't the worst movie of the year, it was certainly my biggest disappointment. Easily one of Fincher's worst. Hmm. Worst. I was surprised to hear that come up in a worst. Hmm. I kind of liked Mank. Yeah I, uh, I, yeah, I keep thinking about it, actually. Yeah. I respect what it was going... Like, trying to evoke... Citizen Kane in 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. There's a lot to like in it. Yeah. And I could definitely see people not liking it, too. Totally. It totally makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Varun Kachwaha. Yeah, it's Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> and Enola Holmes. <laughs> Which I didn't see, but I assumed wasn't great, even though I wish it was. I heard... That, I don't have all the deets on this, but uh, the 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 Arthur Conan Doyle estate like sued Netflix or something over Enola Holmes, I guess because, and I'm just breezing through paraphrasing this, but yeah, from what I understand, the character of Sherlock Holmes is public domain except uh, after some life stuff and whatever when he came back to write more Holmes in the later part of his life that's when Holmes started having like feelings and and, like started growing as a person. I guess some of those stories specifically are not public domain. Mm. So, um, the estate is real cutthroat. Basically long story short, basically if you give your Sherlock feelings, they're going to sue you. (laughs) And if he's respectful to women, (laughs) they'll sue your ass, (laughs) which is phenomenal. He just has to be like a, 
blank archetype like solving the case right good like if he's not a woman like hateful sociopath <laughs> they'll sue your ass um i mean i, I don't know how accurate that mm. all is but that's what i heard that's what i heard all right that's what they next, say <laughs> next i asked best director uh i think you'll like this first one max miller says gotta go with steve mcqueen Got for to. directing uh, best five films of 2020 with a small axe anthology gotcha. i'm really bummed i haven't seen these yet i uh i kept wanting to and i got burned with moonlight on this too because mm. my assumption is that they're all going to be very depressing mm. um but then moonlight ended up being like one of my favorite films maybe my yeah. favorite film of that year so like they're just heavy. i have to they're stop not, they're not being ruled by fear they're just, yeah they're heavy okay okay it's okay. like you know you're what you're getting into you know it's gonna be challenging the first one's long. The other ones are only an hour. Oh, okay. Um, Megan Linart says, Makoto Shin- Shinkai, uh, his stellar direction continues to blow me away. Your name was such an achievement, not just in animation, but in direction. And what he did with Weathering with you was nothing short of magical for me. The way his films look is unlike anything else, and I love him all the more for it. Weathering with you. I have not seen that, but I've seen your name, and I really liked it. I gotta watch it. Uh, Michael Seward says, Christopher Nolan, though Tenet is not my favorite film of his, the technical wizardry uh, and for the film to be fantastic is a feat in itself. (coughs) Excuse me. Uh, Colt Smith says, Brandon Cronenberg. For real, I think he even surpassed anything his father has done so far. And that is not a small feat. The shots, effects, pacing, plot, everything co- just comes together in Possessor. Well, I firmly disagree that yeah, he surpassed yeah. his yeah, father. Yeah, yeah. Come I, on I now. did enjoy... So many s- classics, dude, from David The Fly, dude? Like, the, fly the Fly is, is one of the best unmatched. movies like, ever. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that movie is Come on. nigh untouchable. I even like Existence, like some of his Dude, I put The crumbs. Brood up there. Dead Ringers, dude? Yeah. Have you seen Dead Ringers? I mean, rules. You've seen, seen them all. Except, I think he did a new one, but brand new one I haven't seen. His, like, newest. I've missed a couple of his newer ones. I haven't seen. And, like, I think the only big, huge one that I haven't seen is um, Scanners, maybe? Oh. I know. I know. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen most of them, but I, I'm missing Scanners for whatever reason. Dude, um, that's. I know. It's I know. unacceptable. It's unacceptable. I know. That was my, that was, well, The Fly, I guess, was my introduction. The Fly. Scanner, is Scanners so introduced me to 80 science fiction, I will say. Yeah, dude. I mean, I've seen the, I've seen the effect, like the head, head blowing up, Sean. Uh, but the, yeah, The Fly is one of my favorite movies. That, that shit is incredible. But Creepy Possessor, Gold bringing Bloom. it back around. What? Creepy Gold Bloom. Yeah, dude. Love me some Creepy Freaks Gold Freaks me Bloom. out, dude. What is Brundle Fly? Uh, <laughs> But bringing it back around to Brandon Cronenberg, uh, Possessor, I liked. I um, wanted to like it more. I think it was a little longer than it needed to be, maybe. Hmm. But otherwise, I, I really liked it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's. Ve- I mean, just very cool concept, very cool visuals and stuff. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I think it falls into the trap of maybe the reason I, I don't think it surpassed Cronenberg is that it feels like it feels like young Cronenberg, kind of, where it's like, mm-hmm. like. When I was in film school, you know, we were all making movies about assassins and shit. Um, I made a movie called Bullets and Briefcases where an assassin would collect payment for a previous target killed and then kill that person and then go to the next person, collect the payment that they were given to kill that person and then kill that person, collect, you know, and like it was just a chain, a daisy chain. He had lined up all these jobs to get paid for killing the person he just p- p- killed and then Sounds et cetera awesome. down the line. I mean, it's a fun little short film. If I can yeah. dig it up, maybe we can, we can Sounds watch sick. it sometime with the film club crew here, but, uh, very film school kind of concepts, you know, Yeah. and this one falls into that for me a little bit, but maybe that's just my own personal kind of, cause it rings a little too true. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Look at it. I'm looking at uh, that's the one. I knew there was one, dude. The one with um, walking the dead zone. 
Mm. Cronenberg. That's good. It's my whole. That's a good one. I think you'd like that one a lot. Sick. And and he had a, he came out with a movie in 2014. I never saw Maps to the Stars. Oh, I never saw that one either. Got it. Pattinson joint. Pattinson. Pattinson. Um, Nathan Curse also says Steve McQueen. Uh, Small Axe film series is like an all-time crowning achievement. God, I gotta watch these. I feel like a butt for not watching. Colin Goodspeed. Kitty Green for The Assistant. Gotta watch The Assistant. Yeah, that looks good. I'm pissed I haven't seen that one, too. Same uh, Would You Kindly says Celine Sciamma for Portrait of a Lady on Fire, which came out in the UK this year, last year. Um... This was one of my favorite movies of 2019 in the States, so I am all about calling out more Portrait of a Lady on Fire. <laughs> Woo-woo! Woo-woo! Logan Toss. Toss, hey? Uh They'll go with Nolan for Tenet, because it's the only movie that I saw in 2020 where I truly felt the director's vision guiding the entire movie, which is par for the course for Nolan, really. And for the most part, I thought what he did with the movie was great, if, if not kind of confusing it sometimes. Um, Eric Sayor who I, I will say gets points because I think I agree with Eric Sayer the most times uh, in all these notes because his pick for director is also my pick. Uh, Kelly Reichart? Reichart? I'm not actually sure how to say her last name. I've only read it. I've not heard it out loud. Um, for First Cow is incredible. A unique, tender film that could just could just have been hers. I fully agree. I, I really love First Cow. I watched it just the other night, actually. Um I don't know if you've had a chance yet, Huber, mm-hmm. but it is a film about Bonds I know. To, I to the maximum. You talk about Bonds and Tender, like calling a movie Tender, it is me up. one of the most tender, like, oh, I loved it. I it, And it's also like, this is one of the reasons I liked it, um, the direction so well, because um, it starts with, uh, oh, what is it called? Um and media res or whatever where you you start you see like the end first kind of um but it does some amazing things with that but also just like the pace huber the pace is set so like it bashes you in the face and it's just like this is the fucking pace of this movie get out now (laughs) um because like the, the the beginning of the movie is just like Grass. five silent minutes yeah of like it's like a shot of a boat and then it's the shot of someone like looking in the dirt and then it's a shot of grass for like a solid minute and a half you hear those like <laughs> those are those uh those bugs you always hear those like whistling bugs those like oh cicadas yeah the cicadas do you hear whatever? cicadas uh no wrong time of the year for the cicadas <laughs> i think but like definitely a dog just like goes into the grass <laughs> and then we just hold on the grass and then we hold on the grass that's and then funny. the dog comes back, and then the shot is over. <laughs> <laughs> it goes to the next shot. And I was like, all right, all right, I understand, Kelly. You've put me in the right mind space for this movie. But, um, Slow pace. But speaking of tenderness, though, like, the two main actors in this, um, it's just a depiction of positive, like, masculine friendship and, like, masculinity, uh... In such an interesting time period, you know, like very, very like frontier times, you know, I'm not sure if it states an exact year, but it's, um, you know, definitely people are trying to go west and kind of just reconnoitering, you know, and mm-hmm. it's uh, it's just such a lovely movie. Nice. First cow. Um, Zach Wojnar. On the list. Yeah, dude, you'd, you'd like it. If you're in if you're in a slow kind of just settle in kind of mood good right good sunday afternoon watch absolutely nice uh zach wojnar autumn do wild just made her film uh first film the jane austen adaptation emma with two m's why did i hold up three emma um it's a period film but it feels so cool and now you know i need to she was a rock and roll photographer before uh Mm. she turned to film very cool um yeah i really want to see emma i like uh Obviously, uh, oh my god, who's that, Anna Taylor-Joy? Is that Mm -hmm. who's in there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I really want to see that one. Uh, That one's on Netflix, I think. Best actor is the next thing I asked. I said, best best actor of any gender. Uh, Logan says, uh, for drama, Pete Davidson and King of Staten Island. And for comedy, Adam Andy Sandberg and Kristen 
Milioti, Milioti from Palm Springs. You saw Palm Springs, right? Nope. Oh, me neither. <laughs> nope. Eric Sayer says uh, Maria Di Girolamo from Emma with one M. Hmm. Watch the trailer for this movie. It's bananas. Uh, no, truly mesmerizing. I'll think about her more than uh, any other 2020 performance in years. Also, shout out to Jesse Buckley, and I'm thinking of ending things, and Sydney Flanagan in Never Rarely, Sometimes Always. Uh, yeah, I, I have not yet seen Emma. I really want to, especially because Eric Sayer also mentioned Nicholas Jar did the soundtrack, which I did not know, and I love Nicholas Jar. That's um, fine. But Jesse Buckley... Um, all all the performances in I'm Thinking of Ending Things are so good, um, especially with such weird material. Have you seen I'm Thinking of Ending Things? Unfortunately, no, dude. I love. Ooh, Cosman. I loved it. I loved yeah. it. It uh, on my list to watch. Yeah, it it's really good, and I mean it's you know very cough Kauf- esque mm-hmm. <laughs> obviously, uh, and definitely like. I, I would be interested in watching it again. Like, I understood what was happening the first time, but, like, in watching a few videos about it, they pointed out little details that I was like, ooh, that's really fun. That's like, if fun. you know. I love that stuff. If you know what's going on, like, little shots and stuff that it cuts to um, nice. that kind of tip you if you know what's happening, it's really cool. Um, Megan Linart, uh, best performance to Mads Mickelson from Another Round, um, which I didn't realize was. Another team up with the director of the hunt. Yeah, another this round just, looks just, cool. Just came out to rent. It, it like, just came a week out, ago, yeah. maybe. Yeah, um, I feel like so many just came out like award trying to get them out before award season or some absolutely, limit. Absolutely, yeah. So many just like the floodgates opened. Yeah. So. Well, and going through the because I went through a bunch of different lists like films from America, Britain, Canada, you know, etc. Japan, South Korea. Um, from 2020 while I was prepping this episode, uh, it was kind of funny because I was reading through the lists, you know, and I wrote down the ones I had seen and wanted to see, and it was so back heavy. And I think (sighs) it's because, I mean, you know, movies, that's kind of typical with movies too, is like most of the good stuff comes out middle to late Mm -hmm. in the year, but like very clear this year that there's like that several month gap when quarantine started didn't know what to do didn't yeah. know what to do everyone was like wait what do we do we're holding stuff are we not holding stuff you know and then people finally started going just like yeah just put it on amazon whatever like sure. 19 dollars, like whatever yeah um yeah so it was kind of an interesting case study in how to release a movie um varun kachwaha says uh d-roy lindo in De five bloods he brought a captivating intensity to the film that kept me watching I know the monologue at the end could be seen as award bait, but he pulled it off so well. I hope he doesn't get for- forgotten uh, for major end of the year awards. He's epic in that. Yeah, a lot of the performances in Five Bloods are really good. Um, Colin Goodspeed, Riz Ahmed from Sound of Metal, and Elizabeth Moss in The Invisible Man. I know you love Sound of Metal. I haven't seen that one yet, but I liked Elizabeth Moss a lot in Invisible mm-hmm. Man. Mm-hmm. Invisible Man was good. I love liked Invisible, Invisible Man. Man. Definitely. Uh, Colt Smith says, uh, this one's hard. Elizabeth Moss killed it in The Invisible Mad. Julia Garner in The Assistant. Reese Ahmed. Reese or Reese, right? Reese, I think, yeah. Reese Ahmed in Sound of Metal and the whole cast of Mank, the cast of Defive Bloods. It's a kick ass acting year. Yeah, I I like that. Uh, Nathan Kurtz says, Chadwick Boseman. Uh, rest in peace, shout out. Uh, but, uh, Shutting out to Five Bloods and Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Uh, yeah. Would you kindly, Stephen Yoon, since Burning, this guy's delivering some amazing performances. I haven't seen it yet, but a friend is celebrating his performance in the upcoming Minari. Uh, so he's my best bet. Yeah, I've been hearing no, nothing but like amazing, it. nothing but amazing things about Minari. Yeah, I watched uh, his his uh, little horror movie this year with uh, Samara Weaving. What's it called again? Out Outbreak or maybe something. I oh. forget. That's a cool movie though. She's is she in um It was like one of his big Ready or Not? Is that her? Yep, yep. I liked Ready or Not. That was fun. Ready or not. Here I come. You saw Ready or Not, right? No. Oh, you'd like that movie. It was gonna be this year, but I ran out of time again. 
Mayhem, that movie's called. It's cool. Oh, Steven Yeun, okay. dude. Yeah, I like him a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Conrad says, Wunmi Mosaku and Sope Dirisu as the refugee couple coping with trauma and hauntings of their past in his house. The oh, chemistry man, between them too. is excellent and ranges from tender care to tense distrust. I haven't heard of his house. Came out like Halloween night or the day after. So okay. I was like, come on, why are you doing this to me, Netflix? Gotta give me some huh. warning here, some lead in. So I was all horrid out. Halloween was over, saving this one. But uh, it's funny because this is like top three horror movies of 2020, says everyone, like critically. Oh, wow. So. Dang. Like next year, do 2021. This is. This 2021. Is, I have a list of horror movies that I, I'm saving for Halloween already. Compile the <laughs> list. Awesome. That's, that's there. Uh, hey man, nice shots. Favorite acting was Amy Ryan in Lost Girls. This was a lovely, depressing film that owed much of its impact to Amy Ryan's portrayal of a woman that keeps on fighting just to keep herself from completely breaking down. Uh, also, shout out to Gabriel Byrne. Huh. Love Gabriel Byrne. What about him? Uh, he was in that too, I guess. Dude, I'm a Gabriel Byrne fan. I'm thinking of the right guy, right? Uh from usual suspects yeah gabriel byrne yeah gabriel byrne yeah yep. okay epic actor he's also in vikings he's in, in really tre- in treatment well i know he's in treatment i thought he yeah. kind of like stopped doing miller's stuff. crossing dude well yeah miller's crossing is dank <laughs> as hell man. um <laughs> yo coen brothers what are you up to what are they up to dude what are you up to coen's what's the last thing they did i don't know just gi- just give us another 10 out of 10 please <laughs> I know I've, I saw the last thing. What are you waiting on? I feel like the cones just like throw out tens. Ballad of Buster Scruggs is the last thing I haven't Scruggs. seen. I still haven't seen that. That's the only thing of theirs I haven't seen. Scruggs. 2018. These Netflix movies, man. I just like miss them. Yeah, they just come and go. I guess they're, they're in post-production on Macbeth, dude. Whoa, Cohen's Macbeth. That's bonkers. Dude, who's playing it? Who's in it? Let's check. That's crazy. This is hot off the presses. Denzel, dude. What? Denzel is Macbeth. <gasps> Francis McDormand is Lady Macbeth. Holy Brendan Gleeson crap. is King Duncan. This is going to be hardcore. Brendan Gleeson, dude. Brendan Gleeson, dude. Harry, is, Harry Melling is Malcolm. Um, let's see who else is in here that I recognize. Bunch of other people. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, dude. It's going to be bonkers. Very cool. Sign Man, me up. That's that's nuts, though. Very huh. cool. Very cool. Um, yeah. I don't know. Let it cook. Let it cook. No rush. Let it cook. Yeah. Uh, Zach Wojnar says, this is a bit of a wild card, but I'm giving my best actor to Stephen McHattie for his surreal Canadian indie Dreamland. Not a perfect movie, but I also can't stop thinking about his performance. Cool. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen Dreamland, but it looked interesting from the Trelar. Trelar. The Trelar Lar. The Trelar. All right. I'm going to pick up the pace through the next couple here. Uh, best screenplay, Zach Wojnar says uh, Josh Trank got some flack for his failed fi- uh, Fantastic Four reboot, reboot, but in my opinion, he more than made up for it with Capone, Capone. which he wrote, directed, and act- er, edited. Um. I didn't even know about this Tom until I was Hardy. reading these. Yeah, pretty wild. Uh, Megan Linhart truly believes that the best script of the year is Twittering Birds Never Fly. The characters and their dialogue truly shine in this film, exploring extremely heavy themes and that really being exposed, uh, expressed in the characters. Both male leads in the film are very complex and well-realized. The, act, the writing can be harsh and even quite crass, but for the world they are in, it feels right and makes sense. An amazing adaptation of the manga, exploring this complex relationship within the Yakuza and a budding romance between two men that have deep pain hidden beneath. Sounds interesting. I yeah, what was the name of that again? Twittering Birds Twittering Never Fly. Twittering Birds Never Fly. Sounds Which hype. I was like, when I read that, I was like, is that true? Do Sounds birds not hype. sing when they fly? Twittering um, Birds... They can do. They can, right? Birds can sing while they fly. Yeah. Right. I think so. 
My whole life is being flipped upside down right now. The clouds gather? That was it? What? Twittering birds don't fly? Is there a subtitle to that? No! No? Why okay. did you, I, did dude, you? I typed it in and someone popped up and it's like it's taking me to the clouds I mean, maybe. gather and it looked like an anime. Twittering was... birds never fly is the only yeah. information I have. Okay. <laughs> if, if it has a subtitle of the clouds gather, then yes. I want to see that. I thought you just wrote that down. I was like, the what are you talking about? The clouds gather, dude. <laughs> I mean, they do. The clouds gather, bro. Uh, Cold Smith says, Wolf Walkers has an incredible screenplay, though uh, that isn't surprising for the studio that also did Secret of Kells and Song of the Sea. Hmm. That, I believe, is on Apple TV+, Plus, which I do not have. No. But I think Omar has that, so perhaps I could convince him to throw Wolf Walkers on sometime. Hmm. Uh, Nathan Kerr says, I'm thinking of ending things. Charlie Kaufman and Ian Reed came together to adapt Reed's book into something that is palatable with Kaufman's filmography. Very cool. Um, yeah, dude. I think, uh, what? I oh, really yeah. I, th- I can't wait to watch that movie. I'm so excited. I think I'm thinking of ending things might get my screenplay of the year nod nice. as well. Uh, just because it's so bonkers and nice. in a good way. Nice. And not, not just because it's like. Not just because it's like a gimmick or anything. I think it's truly a fascinating and gentle kind of... Tender. Tender and also like getting... Tender like a brick to the face, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Wrapped up in gathering clouds. Um, <laughs> would you kindly says the in- Invisible Man is pretty well written. I would agree. Also, late shout out to J. Michael Strazinski after watching... All seasons of Babylon 5 and getting obsessed by it and all works by him. Um, the Babylon 5, dude. Yeah, dude. Never Babylon 5, shout out. I've seen a little bit of it. Um, Colin Goodspeed and Eric Sayer, again, also uh, shout out. I'm thinking of ending things. Uh, yeah. Eric Sayer says, so strange yet so precise, which is very good. Um, hmm. Yeah. Strange Best precise. Editing. Best editing, Max Miller says Tenet. Shout out to Jennifer Lame, who uh, comes from an indie background of no Bombbox stuff, and then dove into this, making scenes uh, where film is taking place simultaneously forwards and backwards in time, often within the same shot. So the fact that it makes any sense at all is mostly down to masterful editing. Uh, Runner up, Lover's Rock from Small Anthology Series, which got a few shout outs here. Eric Sayor says Nels Bangerter for Dick Johnson is dead. You'll laugh, you'll cry. <laughs> Love laughing and um, crying. Yeah. Uh, Colt Smith says Mank. Loved the use of old techniques, and I feel it strongly. It is strongly edited, especially after my second watch. Mm-hmm. Nathan Curse. Uh, three films I really enjoyed this year that are largely edited together out of uh, lightly scripted segments, total improvisation. Borat, subsequent movie film host and let them all talk steven soderbergh apparently edited that would you kindly david fincher's editing finesse was discussed in our last episode so mank colin goodspeed as an i'm an editor for my job and so i feel i can speak to this with some authority and weirdly i think i'd give it to soul this year Hmm. sometimes editing in animated movies goes underappreciated because people assume that only the animators control the pacing and the shots of cuts which is not true uh yeah the editor is actually pretty involved um, for me, I think, yeah, Mank, and I'm thinking of ending things. Yeah, Mank, Mank you know, talk about a pace. Mank, it's like a jacuzzi, dude. Mank was yeah. one of the most comfortable movies I watched in 2020. It just really, it was so dreamy, and it took me away. And uh, a lot of that, I think, was the editing. Mm-hmm. The movie had a really good feeling. <laughs> Very good feeling. Well, and, and, and something I think that's a little less tangible Like, the editing, and I'm thinking of ending things, is almost, I wouldn't say gimmick editing, but, like, there's a lot of tricks in it, you know, Um, just to make the concept work. And I think they did that amazingly well. Um, So I'm thinking of ending things, such good editing. But Mank achieves something a little less overt uh, in that it, it, it's a movie that feels like your memory of watching (laughs) Citizen Kane without emulating Citizen Kane too directly because citizen kane now pretty slow like mank pretty fast yeah it's but it thing. still feels like more a classic film totally and colin is totally right soul is very well edited i really enjoyed 
I really liked Soul quite a lot, actually. Nice. Did um, you cry? Did I cry? I definitely got a little... I got choked up, for sure. Nice. I definitely got... Yeah. I mean, it's, have you seen it? No. It's good. I liked it. Um, it's basically like a zen movie, nice. and I really appreciated that about it. Uh, Just nervous. It's not Pixar, sad. Dude. Okay. It's like I I've not Coco. watched Coco. Coco. I've not watched Coco because I've dealt with too much death and like Coco is the one. It seems too intense for me, but others tell me that it's actually nice, like it, it Coco isn't sad. I don't know. Both. Yeah, Soul I found Here's to be, be happy. Yeah. Soul I I found more happy than sad. Okay. Um I mean, it's a Pixar movie. It has that, it definitely has that, like, you know, bittersweet kind of, Up is much more sad. Got it. To my estimation. Pixar, they they like to to gut punch you. Yeah, they do. Um, All right, now we're talking music. Best score, Huber. Best score. Lovers rock, no question. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Let's see if anyone else agrees. Uh, Max Miller says, Tenet, my pulse increases just thinking about it. Overwhelming. Oh, 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 is immersive. it Hans Zimmer? Uh, no, Zimmer I, think it was, I think it was, I think it was, um, Ludwig Göransson or whatever. Nice. I think. Yeah. Uh, Eric Sayer, Nicholas Jar for Emma, 1M. Uh, Bangers Only, it's a real tragedy. The OST is not available for streaming yet. That is a tragedy. I gotta watch that movie. The trailer looks bonkers. Nathan Kurz, uh, while the reaction to Tenet has been divisive, I don't see anyone saying anything bad about the score. Mm-hmm. Probably time that Christopher Nolan and Hans Zimmer took a break from each other, and it's resulted in one of the more interesting scores of any Nolan film to date. Composer Ludwig Göransson, okay, we got it, has already made a name for himself in the past few years, and this stands with the score for Creed as the top of his discogra- discography. Cool. Uh, Ludwig Göransson also, as you may know, does Mandalorian. Uh, soundtrack and yeah he did uh he worked with childish gambino on um uh, this is america as well i believe dude that video yeah dude uh would you kindly soul conrad yeah probably soul right like i say love is rock but it's more adapt there's a lot of like licensed songs in there Oh, yeah. So, Soul, probably. <laughs> One would assume. Uh, shoot. I launched my hair tie somewhere. Uh, Conrad says, best score goes to a film I have not yet seen, but Blood Machines by Rafael Hernandez with the ex- excellent synthwave soundtrack by Carpenter Brute. Yeah, I need to nice. see that one, too. I don't have Shudder. Shudder. Um, Close us. Colin Goodspeed shouts out Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross for Soul. Soul. When I watched, yeah, dude, yeah, dude, yeah, dude. Yeah, I was yeah, waiting for that reaction. Yeah, it's soul. It's soul. I yeah, I was watching Soul, and I was like, this music is fantastic. And then like you get into like a certain part of the movie, and I was like, it's all synth. It's not jazz anymore. <laughs> yeah. And then later in the movie, you're like, like it changes up again, and you're like, oh, I get it, and it's like awesome. <laughs> That's cool, dude. Yeah, Soul has. A, I think Soul would be my soundtrack of the year too. I really yes. loved it. Gotta watch that. Um, Gotta watch that, like, Varun Kachwaha, also Ludwig from Tenet. Best Cinematography, Nathan Kurse shouts out, <coughs> pardon me, Christopher Blauvelt for First Cow and Emma. Uh, one M or two? Two M's this time. Okay. The Netflix one. Emma was directed by famous portrait photographer Autumn Duweld. And uh, Blauve, Blauvelt, let me actually make sure we're talking about the right Emma here. Two M's. <laughs> two M's? Or, or how many M's are we dealing with? Uh, okay, yes. This is the two M's. Also, apparently there's a period in the title of this movie. That's interesting. It's Emma, period. Let's make a statement. Yeah. Literal statement. Um, Emma. Emma? <laughs> Emma? <laughs> um, anyway, I don't... I lost my spot. And then uh, <laughs> First Cow, period. some of his best looking stuff to date. First Cow That looks makes great. me not want to watch it, dude, with the period. I'm really? Upset. I'm upset. <laughs> you don't like that, huh? No, it's pretentious. Oh, sometimes it works. Yep. Sometimes I like that kind of stuff. But yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, <laughs> would you kindly? I watched it last year, but it only just got released this year. Monos. 
I guess you still haven't watched it. Nope. Monos, dude. Oh, I wanted to see that. Oh, okay. No, that's so familiar. I remember wanting to see this movie. Isn't it some, like, gangster thing? I don't know. Eight kids with guns watch over a hostage and a conscripted milk cow on a remote mountaintop. Yeah, Loving these cow films. I want to watch um, that. Monos. As long as it's not Monos, the hands of fate. That <laughs> Monos. Uh, Eric Sayor, Sergio Armstrong for Emma, 1M. 1M, no, okay. No period. <laughs> Although it might have a period in the poster. <laughs> Hang on, let me check. <laughs> it might have a period. Oh, not email. What the shit? Uh, <laughs> I'm checking if it has a, a period in the... <coughs> Emma film. It does not. No period for one you're, of you're cool. Yep, you're, you're good. Cool. I like this one more. Every frame is magnificent in the dance scenes, especially. Conrad says, color out of space. Which was released in Sweden in May, so it counts. Uh, that one looked great. I like that one. Uh, Colin Goodspeed said nothing really blew me away visually except for David Byrne's American Utopia. If that counts, oh, that counts, baby. Everything counts. Everything counts. We don't care. It's 2020. Yeah. Uh, nothing matters anymore. Man. All right, now we're doing TV. Ubisoft. TV. Long way to go. Long way to go. Here we go. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna pick up the pace. Uh, I keep saying that. We're not going to pick up the pace. No. We're just going to keep Settle going. Settle in. The pace Settle in. Uh, my favorite TV shows of the year. This is me speaking. Got it. Got to be uh, like Queen's Gambit. I May Destroy You. Even though I have like two episodes left because it got so heavy. Hmm. Euphoria, The Third Day, His Dark Materials, uh, Shit's Creek, Perry Mason, and Umbrella Academy Season 2. Hmm. I didn't really like Umbrella Academy Season 1, most of it. But okay. I really liked Season 2 quite a lot. I did not really like The Boys. I'm sorry. Hmm. It wasn't as good as season one. I don't even think season one was that good. Oh. To me, it's one of those... I'm sorry. To me, it's one of those shows where it's like, do the cool thing. Get hmm. get to it. Get on got with it. it it's it, like it's it. like It's like how uh, Westworld, the, the robots should have gone nutso in episode like three. Got it. You know? Uh, Some great but that's just me. Here. I'm mm-hmm. excited for this. Let's get into this. I watched all of the boys. I don't hate it. All right. I'm Katie sorry. Garza... Uh, what I really want to shout out is how incredible TV was this year. Major yeah. shout out to I May Destroy You and Queen's Gambit. Uh, they they follow us on Twitter, so they know how we feel about Queen's Gambit. Um, and But they'd love to hear our thoughts on I May Destroy You. I love it. It's such a depiction of like consent and, and grief and abuse and stuff. It's such a heavy fucking show. Also, very interesting show because... It does something kind of gutsy where, like, a thing will happen in an episode, and I'm like, whoa, is the show taking the wrong take on this? Like, are they not acknowledging this for, like, what it is? And then the next episode, the main character's realizing, like, learns basically, like, hey, that was not a cool thing that happened. Like, that was not okay. Hmm. And so, like, it it shows, like, a realistic kind of reaction to certain, like, these terrible things that are happening. And and it is cool. It, It was... Well done show. It's very intense, but well done show. Yeah, I haven't seen um, it. It's good. You you dig it, I think. It's on HBO. Um, uh, incredibly important conversations and depictions of consent and mental health issues that I think everyone should see. Uh, truly one of the best shows I've ever seen any year, and I watch a ton of TV. Uh, also, shout out Sorry. to some other favorites, The Crown, His Dark Materials, and Shit's Creek. Basically, we had the same list. <laughs> <laughs> um Max Miller says, "Devs, did you watch Devs?" Yeah, I thought it was okay. Me too. I liked. It's like I two really or three loved, episodes too long. I yeah, I really loved the beginning half, mm-hmm. and then like certain logic things started kind of like bugging at me. Stalled out. Stalled, Stalled out. out, dude. Yeah. Stalled out. The ending was kind of cool, but like, yeah, I find too that um, Alex Garland has kind of that problem where like he starts really strong and then doesn't doesn't stick the landing always he, it's, yeah he lingers at the climax i feel like for excessively long which which gives lands. you which gives you the impression that the climax is going to be more yep. impactful than mm-hmm. it is <laughs> totally totally i think ex machina is my favorite alex garland joint probably uh yeah probably agree 28 days later 28 days later 
So yeah, he wrote. Kind of counts. But I mean, yeah, that was, and that's an example of it going bonkers in the third act that works. Yeah, um, dude, 20 days later. I really, I really hope we get a third one. That's some BS. 28 years later. People baby, suing wait. each other for rights and all that. They, they been, People got greedy. They've been suing? There were some things, there was conf- so what I'm looking for. Not confrontations. There was conflict. Conflicts? On sides. And it's like, yeah, it's been so long now that who the hell knows? Jeez. If it'll ever go down. How long is 28 months? We've probably passed that. Yeah, just do 28 years. 28 years. Just way should, in the future. They should pull, or just pull a, pull a David Lynch and literally just make it in 28 years. Yeah, <laughs> dude. That'd be sick. I want to rewatch Twin Peaks The Return, <laughs> which seems like a huge that's, undertaking. Yeah, that seems like a lot. But I loved it. The but more, yeah, that's but you get things... a lot out of it the next watch too. Yeah, you'd love it even more because you have no, you sure. don't have the pressure of it being good. You know. Well, and also because it's like, it it really isn't designed to be a week to week show. I think mm-hmm. like, on the one side, it's nice to process some stuff, but on the other side, it's like the episodes aren't structured like episodes. They're yeah. just some of the episodes felt really unsatisfying. Yeah. But then now that I've seen the whole thing. <coughs> Sorry, Omar's burning a candle and it's making my throat go crazy. Whoa. Um uh, Anyway. Get love it. Uh, Zach Wojnar says, upload on Amazon Prime. And, uh, yeah, and also Wayne. Wayne. Haven't seen it. <laughs> Haven't seen either of them. Nor I. Uh, Colin Goodspeed, I May Destroy You. Uh, but they also want to highlight How To with John Wilson. Uh, for being so charmingly strange, and there's nothing like it I've ever seen. This this one's intrigued me. I have noticed it on uh, HBO Ma- Max, but I haven't watched it yet. Hmm. Uh, Megan Lenart, season three of the show Elite on Netflix. Elite, dude, Beth watches Elite. She's obsessed. Ten out of ten. I'm I'm not sure what this is. Shout out, dude. Uh, Elite. It's like a like a a great mystery with some fun twists. It's a school like a high end school like rich people. The Elite. Ah, yeah. Michael Seward. One episode. Okay, bad husband. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, she's like <laughs> saving it. Save it. She's like, dude, we're gonna watch it later. Okay. She okay. likes to watch it first because then she gets to rewatch it a second time with me. Sophia does that too. Yeah, it's the best. Michael Seward, Dark season three. Dark. I'm you still in season two. The power of the dark side. The dark side is a pathway to many abilities, which some might consider. Uh, what is it? Unnatural. Unnatural. That's what it is. I was like, unnatural. something. <laughs> unnatural. <laughs> Woo. I, I love Dark. I uh, am still on season two of it. Because I'm just, honestly. It's too much shit. It's too, well, and also just like, this is so not me, but like, I'm, I'm, I've been working so constantly and at my computer so constantly. Yeah. That when I'm watching something at night, I don't want to also have to read. And I just can't stand the dub. Yeah. yeah. Um, even though I love dark. Yeah. Sometimes you're just to, like, too tired for subtitles. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Which is funny because like a lot of my favorite stuff is subtitled, but. Yeah. Uh, subs and dubs, baby. Subs and dubs. Subs and dubs. However both you want to do it. All the time. Uh, Morgan Mahala says, "Boys, season two. Boys. What a fun, mature critique on hero culture and commodi- commoditization, where you know." Uh, where you do not know where the show will go unless you suppose it is off the rails. Mm-hmm. Also, Mandalorian Season 2, Fargo, and Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul. Nathan Kurse says, How To with John Wilson. Comedy documentary program on HBO. Um, produced by Nathan Fielder. Oh, I didn't know that. Cool. cool. Gotta watch that. Uh, would you kindly Garland's devs is pretty cool. However, after ignoring it for 25 years, I got blown away by Babylon five. <laughs> is this the second damn time? This is so epic, dude. This is a syndrome. I'm here for it. <laughs> this Yo, is one Babylon of the best sci-fi 5, series. Dude. If not the, is this the same person that brought up Babylon five before? I need to watch Babylon five now. It, it feels important. To... Babylon five feels important. It feels like can't miss. Okay, can't so miss it is when you kindly bring it up Battle on 5 both Dude, the times. one-armed man. Top huh? cast. The one-armed man from The Fugitive is top build. In Battle on 5? Yeah. Battle and, on 5 is good, dude. Battle on 5 is sick. And the French woman from Lost. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, what was the, her name the, like, like Rousseau, weird one? maybe? Rousseau, yeah, the Rousseau. one who like, lives in the woods. Yeah. Dude, do you remember when Lost was like cool and exciting? Dude, I love Lost. I love Lost while I watch it. I love Lost looking back at it. <laughs> I will not hear it. Dude, Lost was the first show where I was like, I got I can't die before this thing is over. I got to got to watch Lost, dude. It was an event. I would get together with like friends and yep. we'd watch it every week, yeah. yeah. Lost, I loved Lost, man. Love I don't it. even I like I don't hate the ending. I get what they were going for. <laughs> yeah. I just JJ pisses me off, man. You can't go into this shit without an ending. You can't. You got to plan. Dude, do you even think JJ Abrams was anywhere near oh, the no. set for like the last couple seasons? No, no. And 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 that was yeah. Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse mostly. Yeah. Like, that's that was how I developed my distrust for Damon Lindelof too, but he won me back with Watchmen, that Watchmen. Yeah, Watchmen. Was that He won me 2020? back. 2020? Was that this no. year? Was that this year? That's like that's my show this of the year. year no one has said Watchmen. I'm a Wait, was that this year? Dude. Hang on. Was that this year? I honestly don't know what even 2019, happened. 2019. Okay, 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 okay. It I ended like, December 15th, 2019. Okay, okay. I was like, that can't possibly have been this year. Okay, okay. Fuck, Watchmen was so good. <laughs> um, Conrad uh, says, I'm not okay with this, uh, which was made by the people who made the end of the fucking world. Both shows I really loved. <laughs> I'm not okay with this. Was canceled by Netflix. Mm. Um... Also, best season goes to The Boys. Mm -hmm. Love that show and everyone in it. Best true crime is All Be Gone in the Dark. I agree. That show is fantastic. Have you have you and Beth watched that one? Mm -mm. You would love that show. Is it's it real so or? Good. Yeah, hey. it's 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 about the uh, the the Golden State Killer is the name that they. She okay. Gave. It's it's Patton Oswalt's late wife, mm -hmm. who was doing all this amazing research, and um, well, I won't say too much about it. Yeah, but I miss it's this very. One. Very good. Because 2020 was the year I watched a shit ton of true crime. <laughs> this like... one's on Hobo Max. Okay. You, cool. you, it's it's one of the better ones I've seen, and I've cool. you know I've watched a lot of episodes of Forensic Files because of you. <laughs> Forensic Files. I learned it from you. I'm watching BuzzFeed Unsolved now. Oh Lord. On Amazon Prime. <laughs> How's that? Episodes range from five to thirty minutes about unsolved mysteries. It's That's really a spread. Good. I've gotten into bizarre, like, um, conspiracy or, like, not conspiracy, but, like, unsolved mystery videos on YouTube. Um, oh, my gosh. Like, there's a channel called Let Me Know that yeah. d does, like, they're pretty decent. Like, he did, yeah. like, this is stuff like um, that plane that disappeared or, like, Cicada, that ARG that was really weird or, like, um, D.B. Cooper. D.B. Cooper, dude. Um, shout out to the Loki trailer where he's fucking D.B. Cooper. D.B. Cooper, bro. <laughs> Loki. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, I'm here for it. But yeah, stuff like that. And like weird Reddit mystery channels that are like talking about like, I don't know. Some of them are good. A lot of them are really depressing, these YouTube videos. Yeah. Uh, Logan. Taos. 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 <laughs> Tell us again how you say your last name. Um, hard to remember what new shows I saw, but I'll go with Queen's Gambit. Queen's Gambit is sick. Queen's Can't Gambit go wrong. Sick. Eric Sayer, best new show or season of the year. The Last Dance kind of has to be show of the year. No other piece of mu media felt close to as popular and as universally loved. I'm not even sure what that is. I don't. I don't think Chicago Bulls. That. Chicago Bulls, Ian. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I don't understand. Chicago don't Bulls. <laughs> never, never, never. The Chicago what now? Um. <laughs> Nice. Hey man, nice shot says high score right there high with you, score. Huber. There it is. Was waiting for <laughs> someone. Yes. Thank you. Great uh, great show, very entertaining and informative, both for newcomers to the gaming and who've kept in touch with the median Perfect. medium over the years. And Perry Mason, I watched because of nice. my recommendation. I loved Perry Mason. Really Sick. nice show. Complex, dark, well acted, great cinematography. How to with John Watts Wilson, Umbrella Academy season two. Did you watch Perry Mason? No, but I love him from Americans, so it is. Yeah, dude, you would love top. that show. Perry so Mason, pumped. I loved that show. Okay. It's so nice. There's only six episodes, right? I don't know, man. Okay. It's 2020. Uh, yeah. I just watched him. I've been watching a lot lately, so throw it in. Throw it in there, man. Throw, throw it, it in. Throw that in there. Just throw it on. Apparently, I got to watch this Infinity Train Madness. I don't even know. Still unclear what it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's on HBO, and I, I guess. Silent Constant told me the less I know, the better. So okay, and I trust. Was that the last one? Silent Constant. What? 
Was that the last one for shows? No, uh, Varun Kachwaha also shouts out The Expanse. Got it. Which Excellent. I've been watching. I'm caught up. Same. I like The Expanse I'm one or two behind. I'm caught up. Nice. It's good stuff. Is that it? That's it for TV. We've Nobody still got- said Bly Manor. I'm, I'm sad. Yo, dude, I Nobody loved Bly Manor. Nobody said Bly Manor. I'm so sad. I loved it. Me I too. saw it. I watched Me it. Me too. I know. You loved it. And I love that you loved it. And I watched it again. Omar was watching... Uh, he was on like the last couple of episodes after I'd already oh. seen it, and I ended up just sitting down and watching the last like three yeah. episodes again. So and getting all sad. Made. Yeah, dude. <laughs> just the way it all connects. Like I really, really thought about Bly Manor for for months afterwards. Warm, Shout out. warm blanket. Mm-hmm. Cold, also, wet, soggy, warm blanket. <laughs> also, two other quick shout outs. One to normal people. Oh yeah, I've heard that's good. Um, uh, from Gabby, right? She when she was on here, normal people. Oh yeah, I mean, sounds like something she'd be into. She rec- she like shouted it out, and I hadn't watched it yet, but just watched it, and it's freaking Asked amazing. Bill. School bonds, you know, you know what you're in for. You love school bonds. And then and more, one more school bonds. Never have I ever, which is about huh? uh, an Indian American girl coming of age in high school. Very cool. Super good. Recommend those if you're looking for some school coming of age bonds. Have you seen Euphoria? I watched the first episode, and it was uh, one of those Legion situations where I'm like, I'm not in the right uh, headspace for this at the <laughs> moment. So I think you'd end up liking both of those. Legion, yeah. Legion ends up being very incredible. Nice. Definitely has missteps, but all in all, Legion is fantastic. Shout out Noah Hawley. Looking forward to your Alien uh, TV show. Is that happening? Don't fuck it up. I don't know. Okay. Is it not happening? I don't know. The last I saw was the announcement. It better if there's be happening. been news since then, I don't know. Okay. I don't imagine they would announce it and then immediately be like, nah, although it's alien, so that happens almost every time. So <laughs> who knows? Who the hell knows? But I think Noah Holly could do good good stuff with aliens. Yes. Uh, quick, quick shout outs here to films that flew under the radar. Hmm. Max Miller, uh, We Are Little Zombies. We Are Little which Zombies. Is, <laughs> it's a Japanese ki- uh, film about four kids who meet at a funeral home where their parents have all just been cremated. Dude. Now with no supervision and no home to go back to, they team up and form a band. Bonds. Sounds pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, sounds like Bonds, sounds, dude. Sounds sad and fun, though. Yeah. Um, Colt Smith says, Wolfwalkers, for real, watch it. Nice. Would you kindly, Steve McQueen's Small Axe series... Pilot film Mangrove 9 is a masterpiece. Colin Goodspeed, The Assistant. Morgan Mahala, Extraction on Netflix. Stur- dude, Under the Radar, Extraction? One of the top films of the year, I think. That was breaking numbers at Netflix. Breaking numbers down. But I didn't see it, so it's Under the Radar for me. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Nathan Curse says The Vast of Night, hmm. which is mm-hmm. one of my favorite films of the year, actually. Incredible feature nice. de- debut from Andrew P- uh, Patterson. About nice. two teenagers in the 50s investigating what they think might be an alien frequency. Uh, really great movie. I do really, you, really loved it. Do you feel this way with digital releases, Ian? This is how I feel. This is a me problem. Mm-hmm. Okay? If a movie releases digitally, I feel like if I don't watch it that night or the <laughs> very next night... You never so, like, you know how it, it always releases, like, one night early at, like, yeah. 10 p.m.? If I don't watch it that night or the, the release night, I missed it. Missed the that, boat. I, Best I, of I, night, I missed it by, like, a day. It had come <laughs> out, like, Friday, and it was Sunday. I was like, it's old news. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I kind of understand what you're talking about. I also... I, I know what you're talking... I know what you mean, but... You gotta get you gotta get beyond it. Yeah, I got because like with movies, it's like the bo- you know the box office week yeah. end. Yeah. Or like even like the next week. I feel like there's more of a runway there. But digital you just free, so free fast. Free mind from the shackles of opening weekend, Huber. True, true, true. true there true. are no opening weekends anymore, true. alas. It's just whenever is good for you. Yeah. Uh, Conrad shouts out Blood Machines. Blood uh, Machines. The Carpenter Brute. Give me the blood machines. <laughs> Give me the blood machines. Uh, Logan says the gentleman. Pretty great gentleman, return to form for a guy one. Richie. You saw that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I couldn't remember if I'd seen it or not. 
this one. Uh, Palm Springs and King of Staten Island and Freaky, which is Freaky. basically Freaky Friday, but with a slasher villain. Uh, I want to see that one. It looks yeah, cute. Yeah, it looks fun. It looks fun. Uh, Eric Sayer, great film. Every great film, to be honest, feels like they flew under the radar this year, but special shout out to Baccarau. One of this film's one of this year's best B A C U R A U. Hmm. Never heard of that one. Me neither. Hey man, nice shots. Shouts out Relic. Relic. Thanks for the recommendation, Huber. Relic. <sighs> Zach Wojnar says the rhythm section had something like a fifty million dollar budget and made only five million at the box office worldwide. Blake that was Lively, the dude. Pandemic. That's a Blake Lively uh, John Wick vehicle. It was like she I, was she was trying to do the Charlize. Uh, yeah, what atomic was that one blonde? called? Atom- atomic. It was trying blonde? to be an atomic or the blonde. The old guard, maybe. It was trying to be atomic blonde. I am tempted Sorry. to blame the title. Yeah, and the trailer sounds... was not good. Oh really? The yeah. rhythm section sounds like a sad romance movie just mm-hmm. from the title, but or like a drumline kind of thing. I was on board because I had just watched Gossip Girl recently. Mm. It's like, yo, dude, like, live, let's go. And then, the, but the trailer was just like, it was like, eh, maybe not. Sophia maybe and I watched. <laughs> Sophia and I watched the first fifteen minutes of the first episode of Gossip Girl, and then the last Never again. twenty oh, minutes told, of we the talked last about yeah, episode we talked, we talked. of Gossip Girl. Yep. yep. <laughs> I hate that show. <laughs> I, know, I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> okay. Now here we go. Best film wait, of twenty twenty. That was what? under the radar. I wanted to shout out that. Oh, outpost. shout some out, baby. Shout some out. The outpost, which was the uh, that the war movie from uh, a Jake Tapper book he wrote back in the day, hmm. the Battle of Kamdesh in the War of Afghanistan, Afghanistan War. Damn. Yeah, really harrowing stuff. Um, good action is one thing for a war movie, but it like just the soldiers, the way it portrays them. That's what everyone, like all the, critically, everyone was like praising that. And then when I watched it, I was like, dude, I love these characters. It's like really well done with the soldiers. Cool. Really realistic. Very nice. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> best film of 2020, Megan Linart. Truth be told, I didn't see much in 2020. But yeah. from what I saw, I think the best film was Another Round with Mads Mikkelsen. Mads Gotta watch it. I gotta it. see that one. I gotta the see that hunt. one. It looked depressing because the hunt destroyed me. So, <laughs> not to be confused with the hunt, which is no, that different hunt. weird one, like dangerous different game hunt. kind of thing. Uh, Michael Seward says, "Little Women, stellar, stellar cast, heartwarming, heartfelt, real gem." I agree. I saw that this year too. That was one of my favorite movies in twenty nineteen of all time, dude. Cute Little movie, Women yeah, obsession. Yeah, yeah. I loved all their performances too. Mm-hmm. That Florence Pugh. She's yeah. so good. Love that movie. Shit. And I love Sasha Ronan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Colt Smith Possessor, I think. Damn, I wasn't expecting it to be so good. Sick. Tyler Travis, best film of 2020? Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Uh, Have I ever been to Palm Springs? Maybe. I've been to Palm Springs. It was incredibly hot. Hmm. They had misters. Like they had misters above your food on the outdoor patios at restaurants, and I remember thinking that was insane, but it was so hot that the mist didn't even get down very far. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, this is hell. This is the worst place I've ever been. Yeah. <laughs> I don't that like it. That sounds like something that would freak you out, Ian. Yeah. Oh, I was the I mister was terrified. on your food? I was like, they're misting my food? What the fuck is this? <laughs> it was unsettling. It was very strange. Oh, it's so good. Um, <laughs> Nathan Kerr's Sound of Metal. Uh, hey man nice shots uh, giving best film favorite film best cinematography and best score to Soul, Soul. Uh, I just I saw this a few days ago and it was a very impressed great concept great storytelling impressive visuals and great score tonight's the night dude throw it on Soul's great Disney plus yeah. no additional cost <laughs> Vroom Kachwaha P- Portrait of a Lady on Fire came out in 2020 in UK so that's it for me yeah, baby. If Portrait of a Lady on Fire came out this year, it would blow th- most things out of the water for me, too. Uh, <clears throat> film really stays with you. The acting chemistry between the actors just works so well. Kept me glued to the screen. I agree. Zach Wojnar says, Hammer. Uh, this was a movie that came out of nowhere. And Hammer. I honestly probably wouldn't have ever known it existed. I don't. Uh, hadn't been interviewed to ask that, or asked to interview the actor Will Patton for it. 
but I'll be a son of a gun if that movie hits like a freaking hammer. hammer. The final moment is one of the greatest endings of a movie I've ever seen. Wow. Sounds wild. Hammer. Skipping ahead, I, like I guess name. you could. I guess you could say it's a mix of Hell or High Water and the Andy Griffith Show. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what a mashup. Um, I guess I could kind of picture that mashup, dude. Both good, so who knows? Uh, would you kindly shout out Tenet? Tenet. Uh, Logan Taos. I'm like close to just getting it over with and watching it non IMAX. I'm so. Oh, I close. thought you watched it at home. No, Ian, you know me. Bitch, you ain't gonna see that shit in IMAX. Dude, in 2022, probably. Ay. He'll throw it in there, don't you think? I mean, probably. <laughs> it, Hubert, can I... Can I... It's you not despise, worth... You despise this I movie. don't despise it, but it's not worth the wait. It's not visually that interesting. It's not worth the wait, but also it's not worth my time now. So really... Whoa. It all evens out, and then maybe it all the, the IMAX will make it worth so i got nothing to lose and if it's not leaving digital if it stays online then yeah, yeah there's nothing nothing, no risk no risk all right fair enough fair enough. no pressure i don't hate it <laughs> I, I actually kind of wanted to watch it again just to see <laughs> we started this calling it an abject failure financially <laughs> okay and because, and because I think it was irresponsible to put it out, I'm and just, I think uh, because everyone was like, it's the movie that's going to save cinema, yeah. kind of led to yeah. killing movie theaters forever. Should have pushed it. They should have delayed doing? it. Yeah. It was Like, shouldn't you follow the Mar Marvel Cinematic Universe? Yeah. The industry leaders. Sorry, yeah. Nolan. <laughs> Sorry. Like, it just, it just, it, it just, <laughs> it just smacked of of little little chrissy nolan's ego to me like if we gotta he, put my movie out bleep, he bleep, had bleep. a he had a very weird desperation it felt like with it and it's like dude why just delay it and it, it felt very but desperate. also like i don't know it's weird if it were fucking good then it would be like all right like yeah good good movie to see in theaters whatever but like it's a it's a fine movie it's but fine. it wasn't like get people killed good like, yeah, no I movies. Agree. I agree, hundred percent. Hundo uh, P. What? Hundo P. I agree. Oh yeah, uh, but we digress. Ten is not that bad. Don't worry about it. Uh, Logan Toss says Palm Springs. Eric Sayer can't decide between Emma one M no period one M okay. Uh, or uh, I'm thinking of ending things, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, and Colin Goodspeed, Sound of Metal. Nice dude. And then I also asked people's favorites. Conrad said Color Out of Space or End Underwater. Carlos Delgado said uh, highlight of film experience or theater experiences of the year was who in the world would have thought Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> I had no faith in this movie, but wanted oh. to go support it after they actually responded to internet mockery and changed Sonic's design. Sonic ended up super cute and endearing, and it was a fun, dumb movie. Yeah, it Great. was a fun, dumb movie. Uh, Megan Linhart says my personal favorite film of the year was weathering with you um would you kindly little women and american utopia the musical by david byrne such a special place in my heart maybe that's why i got confused about gabriel byrne because i was thinking of david byrne and i was david like he was byrne. in that yep yep um crossing the wires cross the wires robert cassidy 2020 was the most mostly a backlog year for me uh so i haven't seen much new but mm -hmm. pray Birds of Prey, Onward, Scoob, Tenet, Soul, and Mandalorian might actually be the only things released in 2020 that I watched. <laughs> um, but right now, everything I watched was pretty fun. Onward and Soul, both especially pretty, uh, with some nice heartfelt moments. Baby Yoda dominates every my every waking thought, and that's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. I love Baby Yoda mm -hmm. with all my heart. Um, Jason Wojnar would like to... Highlight two movies I've seen this year, and then I pasted someone else's comment accidentally in between them. <laughs> so Colin Goodspeed shouts out to I'm Thinking of Ending Things, and then Jason Wozniak's comments continue. Uh, first one's a documentary, Ukrainian documentary, The Earth is, I think, there's a typo here, but I think it's called The Earth is as Blue as an Orange, um, but a family living in eastern Ukraine who use their love to cope with their life in a war zone. Whoa. Um... And then the other one is The Painted Bird, about a young Jewish boy looking for his family during World War II. 
Nathan Kurz says Dick Johnson is dead. Uh, Varun Kachwaha says, here it is. Yep, it's Tenet. <laughs> Favorite film of the year? There it is. Uh, Eric Sayar. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll use this favorite film to shout out Agnes Verda's Verda's, uh, Cleo from 5 to 7, a marvelous film, and now an all-time favorite. I got to see that Hmm. one. Agnes Verda's good stuff. Uh, Zach Wojnar, one of my best and last movie-going experiences of 2020 was taking my cousins aged 13 through 17 to see Birds of Prey. I knew it was going to be their Kill Bill, and I was right. I've never been prouder than seeing my girls debate which one was Huntress. For the record, Seori is Huntress, Inari is Harley, Yuma, uh, Yurami is Cassandra Kane, and I'm the limo driver who gets his legs broken. <laughs> Love that. Uh, I as in Zach, not me. Um, <clears throat> and then anything else? Would you kindly is most looking forward to Dune. Nice. I might also be most looking forward to Dune. Dude, Dune also not on an IMAX. And did you see he was also pissed? Do you remember Nolan? Oh, he was pissed about the HBO thing. Yeah. yeah. So. It's a uh, little sketch that they decided to put all those things on HBO without telling anyone, really. Yeah, and, like, like, legally specious. Dune, but, like, at the same time. Dune, dude. Like, like uh, think of. I mean, uh, I just got a 4K of, TV, so. Think of Blade know. Runner, though. 2049. Not just, not just visuals in the theater, yeah. but that sound, sound, dude. Dude, dude. When Blade Runner 2049 ah. started on that eye and all the synths, I yeah. just started weeping. <laughs> I remember you said. I that. know. Yes, dude. <laughs> dude, you'll ah. get no debate from me. Going to the movies is like the thing I miss. Yeah, I, know. I know. Like I don't miss seeing my friends. I do miss traveling back for like holidays and stuff, but like going to the movies is what I miss. Do we? Do we just crack it open then, Dune? It just is what it is, and you you watch it. I mean, it? It, if they delay, like, here's the thing: like, I'm not sure when it was supposed to come out. I know I, it was I supposed to come out 2020. Summer. Yeah, but I'd imagine. So if they're no, delaying, I think, it was, it, I think it was always supposed to be this year summer. Oh, really? 2021? Yeah. yeah I think so I mean, so. we might make it then, because like, depending on, I don't know why getting these vaccines out is so slow. Like, demand or supply should be the bottleneck, right? Like mm-hmm. every every vaccine that you get should go into someone's arm immediately. I don't understand why there are millions of vaccines that are just sitting in coolers. I read a story that pissed me off today about, like, somewhere up north in California, like, their refrigerator broke, and so they had to, like, rush to give people these vaccines in two hours, and they did, like, 800 in two hours. I'm like, why were you sitting on 800 vaccines? Put Give them to people. Yeah. I'm sure there's a reason that I just don't know. Hmm. I'm willing to listen to the reason. It's the, like, tier you're in or whatever. It's the tiers, but, like, then, like, do the tier, do tier one, Yeah. finish it, Yeah. do tier two. Like, it's not complicated. Like, I mean, it's complicated, but it's not, you know, it's logistically, yeah, it should not be. Executionally not complicated, but, like, theoretically not that complicated. Hand them out, damn it. Still, though, this year, like. I just want a vaccine, man. Come on. Still, even, (laughs) even with a vaccine, like. I can't imagine going to a movie theater this year. I, I still can't. I can't 2021. see 2021. I really, I can't even see it, Ian. I, even with I the, don't even see with it. The, like, I, I don't, don't see it until like the fall, maybe. Like maybe. And then it's like, okay, I might as well just wait till 2022. Like I'm going into yeah. this year expecting another, another wash of like no movie theaters. Yeah. I mean, it, it really depends on how effective and how widespread we can get the vaccine. We need mm-hmm. everyone to get vaccinated so that, we can return to normalcy with herd immunity. Right. And like, yeah. we're still gonna have to all wear masks. Totally. Like for another year or more, I might even just part of me kind of thinks we'll just kind of be like Japan and stuff. We're like, yeah. it's not uncommon to Normal, just see people yeah. with masks, you know, like I would be all for that. Totally. Um, like knock on, on wood, but I haven't gotten a cold or a flu or anything. in you know, eight yeah, I woke up today with kind of a itchy throat. I'm good now, though. Knock on wood. Today was yeah. a little, I was like, what is that? A little something. What it went is away that? Then. It was probably just like I went to bed late. I mean, I sleep with my mouth open. I think I wake up every morning and I'm just like. <laughs> same. <laughs> same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, man. Nice shot says, because I wanted to mention this one, but found out it didn't really fit into any categories above. Uh, call it most pleasant surprise of the year. Host. Host. Thanks again, Huber, nice. for recommending this. Fun one. <clears throat> quarantine flick 
Yeah, it might not be the best, but it was definitely something creative. Mm-hmm. Uh, really? Like and then it. also, I, I liked this uh, Hey Man, Nice Shots had a nice uh, message for, for us, Huber, and I got to read it. Nice. Um, and so here I'll say it to you. On a final note, thank you guys for these wonderful podcasts. I only discovered them this year, but I always look forward to the next episode. Hmm. Rarely have I come across two guys that reference the same movies I love and talk about it with such passion. When you did the Nick Cage episode, <laughs> I knew I was in the right place. Thanks for all the great times and keep it up in 2021. Thank you so much. That means a lot. That means a lot. Thank you. Seriously. It's, uh, it's nice to hear that kind of thing. Ian, have you seen um, the history of swear words with Nick Cage? I have not yet okay, seen that. Okay. I, have, I, have I very, want the full report. Ian. I know. I'm very excited. I saw a review <laughs> headline today that said it wasn't very good. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> dang it. But I'm excited to see it for sure. Maybe this weekend I'll watch that. Nice. Um, Varun Kachwaha says that uh, for them, 2020 was mostly a catch-up. They've seen so many Kurosawa films, thanks to the British Film Institute channel on Amazon Prime that has all of them. Oh, cool. I think most of them are on Criterion channels. Yeah, and that Kurosawa episode. Was that 2020? If that wasn't in 2020. That we did? Yeah. Well, we did a Samurai episode. That's right. Yeah, we haven't done a strict Kurosawa episode. Uh, That's right, that's right. Which would be good. No disrespect to Kurosawa, but I just think of samurais. I think of him. I guess you know. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> respect. I'd say yeah, to, yeah, to Kurosawa. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Ron. Um, uh, he's a master of his work, and about uh, the amount of just great films he has is just astonishing. Still need to watch a few more, but wow! And Toshiro Mifune, such a virtual mm-hmm. uh, versatile actor. Yeah, he's crazy. He's great. Fun to watch. Uh, that they have one. been one of my favorite actor directors ever. Um, Jesse Mifune Blue. Is so fun to watch. Oh yeah, Mifune love actors a, like a that. Hoot. Oh yeah. Um, that pairing always reminds me of um, Werner Herzog and uh, Klaus Kinski. Just like two weird friends <laughs> that are just doing stuff. Nice. Um, Jesse Blue. Hey, Ian and Huber, I hope your holidays are going well. My only con- contribution is in the something else category, a recommendation. Though I don't pretend to be a film connoisseur, after watching enough of these, I can claim to know a bit about your tastes, and I think this show is right up Huber's alley. I am currently watching a Netflix show called Giri Haji. Giri slash Haji. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, I know all about it. It's got uh, uh, Mrs. Schroeder from Boardwalk. Um, what's her name? She's like in Kelly uh, McDonald. I don't know. Yeah, Kelly McDonald. It's got Kelly McDonald Love her. in there. She's great. Uh, was all set and ready to hop into this, and then a Patriot situation. I heard it got canceled. Patriot did not. Well, it kind of got canceled. But they ended Premature it. cancellation. No, Patriot ends. Patriot ends very, okay. very well. Okay. Patriot ends. I actually, when I heard it was canceled, I was like, yeah. "What? They ended it? I uh, thought they ended it on purpose." Okay. So eat shit, Huber. Watch Patriot. <laughs> Just give it a few episodes and you fall in love with it. So I totally cut her off, though. I want to hear the rest of this. Oh, yeah. Uh, it translates to duty slash shame. It's set in Tokyo and London. Giri Haji is a thriller about a Tokyo detective named mm-hmm. Kenzo Mori scouring the London underworld to find his allegedly deceased brother, Yuto. Yuto was accused of brutally murdering the nephew of a Yakuza member, which could lead to the onset of a gang war. They go on, but yeah. maybe... The less you know, the better. Spoilers, yeah, spoilers. Yeah. It's only eight 45-minute episodes, so not too not too bad. In September 2020, the series was canceled. It hurts. <laughs> so, I, so I pumped the brakes, you know, because I didn't want to get, get canceled. I didn't want to get super invested in this and then be like, oh. Right. But at the same time, I should just dive in because I knowingly dove into, like, Deadwood back in the day. Which apparently wrapped up in a movie. Omar was yeah. watching all those. Yeah, and that had been canceled. So yeah, maybe I just will dive in. Thanks for the wreck. Omar's been watching Shameless. My <laughs> mom. And, uh, it's my mother's favorite show. He's been binging it, and like she loves it's, it. It's uh, my experience with Shameless is perfect because I see like half of an episode every couple of days, and he's just yeah. been binging them. So like. I see these kids go from, like, infants to, like, having a child of their own, you know? And I'm just like, whoa, okay. That's funny. Um, Alexander Zirinov, I've watched only three movies in 2020. Uh, and if we're using U.S.-only release dates, I've watched none. Wow. 
The translator, Cats and 1917. Dude, 1917, though. It's better than all of them. Yeah. Cats was a real hoot. I miss the Alamo Draft House. I love the food. I love the setting and the vibes. I miss the Alamo Draft House. I really hope they don't go out of business. Same. Um, Same. Also, the, the co ed Alan McBeal bathrooms. Very much appreciate that. Bathrooms stress me out quite a bit. <laughs> um, <coughs> Alamo Draft House. Um, and they're waiting for the Blu ray release of Tenet. Yeah. Morgan nice. Mahala. Is it too soon to joke that Last of Us was a pretty good movie? Last of Us Part 2. <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble, ha, ha, Morgan. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, <laughs> they're just kidding, though. Uh, Morgan Mahala, okay. Uh, we didn't have anything from Tokyo Slim today, and I actually reached out to ask if, if he was okay. <laughs> Is he okay? They're good. Okay. okay. <laughs> I reached out before the episode good. after doing the the notes when he didn't say anything in okay. our things. And I was just like, are you are you good? <laughs> they are good. Good. Tokyo Slim's so, good. Tokyo Slim update. Tokyo Slim all is, is doing well. okay. All is all well. All well. I know you were all worried about that. Um, <laughs> but Morgan Mahalo thankfully did a quote challenge. And I actually have the answers here, Huber. So, okay. Uh, number one. I've had it with your series of professional and personal slights, your lack of fucking common courtesy, and your shoddy goddamn piping. You are a mysterious asshole, young man, and I've had it with you. Shoddy goddamn piping is <laughs> hilarious. You have a guess what this is from? I know what this is from. Home Alone. That's Leslie Claret in the smash hit TV series Patriot. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, I see where this is going. <laughs> just that one, I think. Just that okay, one. Okay, okay. All right, number two. It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. <coughs> I can see the answers, but my guess, on, my guess on this was correct. The Chronicles of Narnia. Close. It was Fight Club. Damn it. It was very uh, close. It was in the same wheelhouse. Same wheelhouse. Very similar films. Uh, three. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Ferris Bueller, yeah. Uh, when I despair, I remember that all through history, the way of truth and love has always won. There have been t tyrants and murderers, and for a time, they can seem invincible. But in the end, they always fail. Think of it. Always. Huh. Return of the King. Gandhi. Gandhi, dude. I've been meaning to rewatch Gandhi. Big time. High on my list for a rewatch. Was that Ben Kingsley in there? Yeah, yeah, it's time. It's time for a Gandhi watch. Uh, last one here. If you figure a way to live without serving a master, any master, then let the rest of us know, will you? For you'd be the first person in the history of the world. Dark City. <laughs> Good guess. Uh, the Master. <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman says that. Nice. Dude, I just rewatched that too. This year, last year. Damn it. Should have had that one. What a film. Dang All it. All right. I really like and The Master. Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah. I, it's okay. not my favorite of his movies, but I liked it. Okay. What's he uh, up to? I don't know. Let's look. P.T. Paul Thomas now. Paul Thomas. Anderson. Paul Thomas, please. Please. Um, Let's see. Untitled Paul Thomas Anderson Project. Post-production. Uh, and they, he right. made a Haim music video. Okay. A couple, like four of them, five of them. Anima, that short with uh, Tom York. Phantom Thread, still never saw it. His the, only movie, the only one I great. haven't seen, yeah. Yeah, me too. Man, he did a buttload of music videos. Holy shit. Phantom I didn't Thread. like Inherent Vice, really. I love anyway, the feel. We were talking about feeling feel. earlier. That well, movie whole time, feels good. The whole time I was watching it, though, I was like, you're right. I should watch Big Lebowski. <laughs> Um, all right, to f to, final to finish things off, I asked you to prepare your top five movies of the year. I only did five because what a weird list. Looking through all my movies, I was like, only five of these were really any good. Weird list. I played so many video games this year. It was the it's, it was the year video games ruled. It's a bonkers year, man. It it barely even counts as a yeah as a year. All right, my can't believe we're out of twenty twenty. Like, ugh. what a train wreck number five 2020 on brand 
American Murder, The Family Next Door. This is a Netflix true crime documentary. Wow, okay. Deeply disturbing and upsetting. Expertly made, Ian. This documentary is made using surveillance cameras, phone cameras, police officers' body cams. Wow. You witness... You are in there when this guy is going down. It, like it is an intimate actual look. footage. Like the you actually get to watch the police body cam of him like going to the house and invest interrogating this guy and like figuring it out. I don't want to like. I mean, it's a true story, so you know what what happens. Yeah, I don't know anything. It's very sad. Obviously, it is a yeah. true crime of murder. Horrible. That sounds uh, but terrible. It, it was really well made and. I just wanted to shout that one out in particular because it's hard to watch, but necessary. It deals with like domestic violence and social media and whew, it's a good one. It's nuts. American murder. My number four possessor. Okay. Yeah. Love science fiction, love original science fiction. It was mostly original. It's really hard for anything to kind of be original nowadays, but it's yeah. still, you know, I can compare it to a lot of things, but as a whole, it still felt like it was doing some new cool stuff. Have you seen Mandy yet? I have not. If you liked Possessor, you're going to love Dude. Mandy. <laughs> next, next Halloween. I, I've got a list. Got it's a not Halloween even a list. Halloween movie. Just watch it. Actually, next watch up, Patriot. Number three. This is how weird of a year this is. It's not the best movie, but damn, was it entertaining. My number three movie of the year. Extraction. <laughs> Extraction with Thor. Chris Hemsworth. I will always love characters that have nothing to lose, that are self-destructive, that have drinking problems, that are unhinged, but looking for redemption, that is exactly what this movie is. <laughs> you need to watch Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. Yes, I, you always mention that one. That I love that one. movie. And you would, th that is, that, what you just described is that <laughs> movie up and down. Drinking and smoking. Like, yeah. <sighs> Stumbling drunk out of a yeah. car while you're trying to find somebody's body. Like, <laughs> dude, yes. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, just loved Extraction. And I'm like, I'm ready for the Extraction Cinematic Universe. Sign me the hell up. Is it like a Jason Bourne kind of vibe? Or Jason what Bourne it? meets John Wick. Totally. All right. Um, all right. He has a really good rival. He has an anime rival in this movie. Very cool. They have a really awesome knife fight. Probably one of my favorite scenes of the year is that knife fight. Next up, number two. Almost number one. Like, basically tied for number one. Small Axe, Lover's Rock was the one. This one is the a night at a house party slash concert. Intimate, intimate movie. A... a Honestly, stop what you're doing and just watch this tonight. It will put you in a mood. It will take you away. Um, incredible music. Just turn me on to Lover's Rock music. I had never really heard of the genre of music. And uh, I just took a deep dive into all the culture of this this movie when I finished. I was just Googling like mad. Like, tell me everything about this era and this time period and this music. Who are these people? I want to know. So really, really good. Really short, Very too. Cool. It's like 60, 70 minutes only. Noich. And number one, Sound of Metal. Yeah, Riz Ahmed is a heavy metal drummer that loses his hearing. Character study. 10 out of 10. Sounds intense. <laughs> it's intense. It's very intense. Sad and happy. Happy sad. Uh, my number five. Th this list is yeah, like you said, this is such a weird list, and I feel like if I Action, dude, what the hell? if I had if I had seen all the movies of this year, probably half of this list wouldn't even be on this list. I, I know. know. I'm gonna watch um, like uh, I'm thinking of anything, ending things like this week, and it's gonna be like my number three. <laughs> I am very curious what you'll think of this movie. Very curious what you'll think of that movie. Um, I almost want to like watch you watch that movie. <laughs> Is it like um, adaptation at all? Because we were talking about that recently with Nick Cage, and I just adaptation kept, is keep thinking great. about it. Yeah, uh, adaptation is more straight ahead. Got than it, this, got it, got this it. one. Got it, got it, got it. 
This one is, it's, I guess if we're talking Kaufman, it's probably got more in common with um, Eternal Sunshine than cool. Adaptation. Cool. But there's some Adaptation in there. Cool. You know? I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it. Kaufman, uh, legend. So my number five is Mank. Nice. Um, nice, dude. I should have put but, it on my list. Yeah. But I mean, like, again... I'm sure that some of these other films, once I get to see them, will knock Mank right off of the top five. Number four, very weird. Uh, I was surprised, but looking at the movies I saw this year, I was like, yeah, this one's going on here. Vast of Night. Vast of Night, dude. Science fiction. Yeah, just I loved the feeling of this movie. I lo- I have a real soft spot for these kinds of, um, like, just kind of real low-budget sci-fi movies that lean on character mm-hmm. and uh, clever camera work and editing and dialogue. This movie just has such a nice feel to it. And like the way that they introduce the characters and like who these people are just through like bricks of like real snappy, quick dialogue and like really long takes. Uh, It's just a really fun, um, cozy little movie. Awesome. Uh, synchronic is another one that, um, I haven't seen, but it's made by the guys who made the endless. And I really liked that. Mm. So I'm excited to see that one too. Uh, number f- three is Soul. Soul, dude. I'm watching I Soul liked tonight. I liked it. Watching yeah, tonight. I liked it. Decided. Um, number two is First Cow. <laughs> He's gonna do um, your list. Which he I just so good. Oh, First Cow. It it's just like the performances of the two characters, especially the um the guy named Cookie, Cookie Figowitz. Uh, I like that name. No, oh, dude, he's he's great, and like, he'll do so much with just his his eyes, and you just you just feel for this guy. He's just so mm-hmm. tender. Uh, and then my number one of the year turns out surprise to me as well. I guess is I'm I'm thinking of ending things. Nice. Oh, ten is not making this list. <laughs> Kidding me? Unexpected. Uh, yeah, I I didn't expect it either. But when I was looking through the movies that I'd seen, I was like, these are my faves. Sure. Um. I'm thinking of ending things in First Cow could kind of swap, swap back and forth maybe, but I'm thinking of ending things just like not an easy movie, not a happy movie, uh, but just really interesting, thoughtful movie. Um, yeah. Nice. I liked it. Nice. Kind of like, it reminds me of Wasp Factory, sort of. It's like got that kind of vibe to it. Um, yeah. Anyway... Uh yeah, shoot, under two hours we did we it. Did it, dude? We did. We got there. <laughs> we got there. That's 2020 in film. Boom. For better or worse, I feel like, I feel like I I feel ashamed of how many times I had to say haven't seen it in this episode. It. But that's the year we've had, man. Like mm-hmm. that's this kind of year is like, and I try to see most stuff, and like woof, mm-hmm. some of these I didn't even know about until like last week. And I was just like, wait, that came out? What is that? Like, A couple of people said it. It was the year of the backlog. Yeah, dude. Catching sure. up on other stuff. And Lightening also just, the load. Yeah, everything this year feels like work. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's just, you know, some chill, like watching a movie. It's just like, oh, God, do I have mm-hmm. to? Um, but yeah, that'll do it for this episode, the first of 2021 we will be back next month. Uh, if you are in the $7 and up Patreon tiers, you are a member of the Easy Allies Film Club. Uh, you get your comments in the show, backbone of the show. I, uh, I like uh, structuring the show like that. I, I think it's a fun way to do it, springboarding off of your comments and just getting to hear what you guys all think, you all think, is fun. I like it. Um, Same. You learn things. You... You, you laugh, you cry. Um, yeah, so if you want to be a part of that, and also we occasionally do some fun things. You can see a big list of Huber and I's growing movies that we update maybe once a year. <laughs> God, I need to keep doing uh, this. If we're honest with ourselves. And uh, like we did a live watch along, which was really fun. Uh, I want to do more of that in the coming year maybe. Yeah, um, that was fun. That was really fun. It gets a little weird because we've got to figure out movies that we can legally do that with only some sherlock holmes movies only some sherlock holmes well maybe not even any sherlock holmes but it's probably some old ones anyway um yeah so check us out on patreon.com slash easy allies 
And uh, on patreon.com slash easy allies, our top tier is the shout out tier, wherein some lovely individuals get shouted out in most of our podcasts. And those individuals are L. Thanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, Caleb Togi Crawford, Nick, and Stephen Thomason. Shout, Shout out. out. Love it. Love it. I'd um, love to see it. Well, thank you, Huber. Thank you, everyone at home uh, listening. Uh, we will see you again next month. Bye-bye. Bye.